Well, so let's start the seminar. Today uh, we are going to see uh, Cetron HVAC. Uh, well, my, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is, is David Blanco. I'm a technical I'm MEP engineer from the technical support department of CYPE. So today we are, I'm going to be in charge of the, of the presentation, okay? Well, we are continuing this series of seminars that uh, we started the other day, the, the last week with the Cypathrone Loads uh, tool. So today we are going to continue with this Cypathrone HVAC tool for designing HVAC installations, okay? So to remind a little bit uh, from the other day, you remember always the, the BIM uh, workflow, the open BIM workflow, okay? So in this case, uh, we are going to see the, the communication between our 3D model. In this, uh, today, we are going to see an IFC builder model. We are going to export the, to a BIM project in BIM server.center platform. And we are going to communicate, in this case, with the tool HVAC and loads. First of all, we are going to pass through the a little uh, calculation of analysis thermal loads because we need the thermal loads to pass the information to HVAC, say that the HVAC to calculate the or size the ducts and the everything, uh, every machine we are going to provide to our HVAC design. Okay, so we are going to communicate this 3D model to the platform and to loads and HVAC tools, and afterwards we are going to generate all the technical documents and the information in IFC format, okay? So let's open our model in our suite. We are, we, if you remember from the other day, for example, today we are going to start from IFC Builder, okay? We are, sorry, because I have two screens, so we're going to pass the information here, okay? So here we have IFC Builder, and I'm going to open an example that you, you, can, you can open it and you can uh, test it if you want. You have a list of samples included in the software. So I'm going to open the offices example. Well, uh, first, uh, before continuing, if you have any questions, okay, during the, the seminar, uh, do, do not hesitate to, to write it on the chat and I will try to answer during the presentation or uh, if you prefer at the end, okay, as you wish. So we have here uh, this, um, this building, I am going to show you the 3D view. We are not going to see this uh, this tool because we saw the other day, okay? This is the 3D view of the building. This is an offices building, as you can see, a multi-story building of offices, okay? So uh, let's generate a, a new project, a new BIM project in the platform, and I'm going to store the 3D model, the IFC model of the building in this platform. So, uh, we are going to link to a BIM project, we are going to export it. We are going to create a new project in my platform. Okay, remember from the other day also, uh, uh, this is the platform of BIM Center platform. Okay, remember you have your, you can log in, you can create your account, it's free, and you can, uh, you only need uh, an email, and you can store, this is a platform to store projects, to make contacts and businesses with other people, you can uh, collaborate, uh, you can download application with your store application and your store paragraph. So this is a like a professional network, a huge professional network is trying to be. And uh, it's a business opportunity. You can also uh, install in your Android or in your iOS uh, device. So you can uh, in, a, in a laptop or in a tablet or in a mobile phone, okay? So this is the platform we are going to store the project and we are going to uh, store all the information of the BIM project, okay? So let's create a new project, for example, Seminar HVAC, uh, October, for example, okay? Type of project is Girls and Seminars. Uh, well, only not visible, it's only for, for today and close to collaboration request, okay? so. We are going to create this project and we are going to store the information of this offices uh, 3D model, uh, IFC format. Do you remember from IFC4 format, it's the standards, okay? So it's based on uh, ISO codes. So it, we guarantee the durability of the project in the future. No, no matter uh, which uh, software you, you can use it, you can, beam, you can use any BIM model, BIM software of the market 
and you can open always your information in that uh, format, okay? So we are going to export the templates in the information in IFC format, IFC4. This is the quick, very quickly because we did it the other day, okay? So now we are going to open uh, the separate loads, just to analyze the thermal loads. Uh, I have uh, everything completed, okay? Uh, let's pass the, the window here, okay? So we are going to create a new project, uh, loads offices, for example, um, not important. Let's select the project. I'm, I'm going quickly because the other day we did it, okay? So seminar at VAC October. Remember always, remember always the, the synchronizer, okay? You, you have to be the synchronizer in uh, launch it, okay? So we are going to create a seminar at VFC October and we are going to accept and import the 3D model. Wait a minute because I have this window here. Okay, so this is the building in 3D. We are going to search for the typologies of libraries the, the same way we did it the other day. I'm going to copy the folder where we are going to store all the libraries for constructive elements, for equipment, for schedules, for anything we are we have used in other projects in a, in the OpenMe workflow. Okay, so we pick up the, the information from the 3D model, we import the edges, the shadow description, etc. And we are going to pass on quickly on the general data for this tool and we are going to analyze the thermal loads because it's needed. The thermal loads are, uh, we need that information uh, to communicate with HVAC uh, tool, okay? So we accept here. Okay, that's it. Uh, as you can see here from the other day, the differences is everything is defined because I have worked on this project before and I have uh, created all the libraries for constructive elements for uh, all the type of walls, partitions, uh, flower slabs, uh, glazed opening, etc., and the spaces I have already defined. Okay, so everything is already defined. We can process the the edges if you want. I can process the edges with the different criteria uh, we have here in this software. Uh, ISO criteria, catalog from uh, from regulations all over the world, or even manually. Uh, analysis of thermal bridges. This is for people that want to, to consider the thermal bridges in the calculations, okay? So once we have uh, defined everything in the project, we pass to thermal loads. Remember from the other day, we established the general data of the location. Let's imagine, for example, uh, today we are going to, I don't know, for Europe, uh, Turkey, uh, I don't know, for example, um, Istanbul, okay? So we accept here and we accept here and we are going to create the hypothesis of calculations. In this case, we are going to create only a thermal zone for the whole project, okay? We could divide in different floors, different stories. We could divide for, uh, I don't know, for separate dining rooms from offices, from uh, corridors, from uh, commune, uh, common zones, okay? Or circulation zones, so in this case, we are going to provide uh, everything in a thermal zone. So we are going to update the results and calculate the thermal loads as we did the other day, okay? So the solve is very quickly. And here, if you remember, we can study, the, analyze the different parts, graph the different losses and gain internal gains, uh, losses for, for uh, constructive elements, for any, any part of the software. And uh, here we are going to generate the reports. If you want to consult it, you can consult here the complete reports. This is what we need, the information for cooling loads, all the, the bats and the, uh, the power we need to analyze after to size the equipment and the, the HVAC installations for heating and for cooling, okay? This is the peak load we need for cooling and heating to size uh, afterwards in HVA tool, HVAC tool the different uh, size of uh, the different equipment and ducting uh, network, okay? So we are going to export the information to the BIM project. So we are going to export it. 
Okay, like this. Okay, so the information is exported to the BIM so to the BIM uh, platform. So let's open now. We are going ready to open the information to the okay Cypatron HVAC. Okay, remember that uh, as I said before, this software as the reference of the name you could imagine. This is for designing of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning installation of facilities. Okay, so we are according to different methods. We have different uh, U uh, European codes. We have ASRAE methods for ducting, etc. We have different methods, methodologies, or codes, or regulations, or standards to analyze the different parts in HVAC installations. Okay, so. Let's open this uh, tool. Well, let's pass the, the window here. Okay, this is a welcome window as any other tools or open BIM tools that uh, developed by CYPE. Okay, so here we are going to create a new job and we are going to import the 3D model from the uh, BIM project and also the uh, thermal loads for uh, from separate loads generated by this uh, the tool we have just uh, do it with that just done. Okay, let's create a new project, for example, seminar HVAC analysis. Okay, we are going to accept and this, uh, this tool, as any other tools in OpenBIM workflow, we have two possibilities. We, have, we can work with a BIM model, this is what we are going to do today. This is the main utility, the most useful utility. Yes, to import a BIM model and uh, to make, for example, 3D views, to make the design 3D and analyze, always linked to a BIM project and uh, always they have the possibility to return the information to the BIM project. If you click or uh, if you respond here no, uh, you can do it manually in the introduction. You can um, uh, design the, the, all the spaces, all the rooms and provide the HVAC installation without a 3D view. It's another possibility, but the most useful is to link to a BIM project. Okay, let's click on yes, and here we have the window to import the 3D view. Okay, this is the wizard to uh, assist us uh, to uh, uh, to configure the, the project. So let's pick up the project. In my list, this is my list of projects I have in my account. So Seminar HVAC October, let's click on next. And the software is going to pick up the information in 3D and also the thermal loads. As you can see here, uh, the software is informing us the initiator is from IFC Builder. Remember the other day we pick up another uh, IFC model generated by Revit. Uh, today we have uh, started from an IFC Builder model. Uh, remember the IFC Builder is for free and you can use it if you want. Okay, so and we are going to pick up the information for thermal loads. This is in the already stored in the Build Server Center platform. Uh, here, for example, in my projects tab, I can show you the information for the 3D. Uh, for example, as you see October, uh, we have the 3D information. Uh, okay. As you can see here, this is a 3D in a thermal loads analysis. Okay. So, uh, we are going to continue. We are going to click on next, and we are going. Sorry, because um, yes, well, the library is, uh, is not very useful here because I don't have, I don't have, I haven't worked with this uh, tool uh, or this project before. So I can click on next. Let's import all the stories of the building and all the type of rooms. Okay, all the types of rooms that are um, defined or designed in the project. So let's just click on next. And the software is going to import the 3D model and the information for the thermal loads. Okay, let's wait a minute. Okay, here we are. So here we have uh, the, this is the work the the environment of the of this tool, HVAC tool. As you can see here on the bottom uh, right in the bottom left of the screen, you can see the 3D model, the IFC model. Also, we have these stories, the, all the floor plans. And the DXF or DWG here we can you can manage or you can uh, your templates. I can show you here the window. This is all the templates we have exported from IFC Builder or the mo the modeler you have used. If you have used Revit or Archicad, Oplan, etc., you can generate the, the templates here. Okay. So we have the stories, we have the 3D view, we can manage our templates, and here are the toolbar with the different tools. 
is divided in project tab. We are going to see the first of all the project tab, the distribution to in order if you want in case we want to group to group or assign different thermal zones here, or to introduce manually spaces. We can the heating tab, ventilation for ducting and the diffusers and grills, and also for uh, in this case Toshiba. We have started for this uh, manufacturer, this fabricant uh, Toshiba in order with the products uh, for uh, BRF, multi-split, split, split uh, one, by, one by one, and the piping, okay? And also it is uh, all the tags to, to manage the tags and to edit tools. Obviously, finally, the calculation part, okay? So, uh, well, in this case, the 3D view, we want to be, uh, to consult the 3D view uh, a little bit uh, higher or bigger, here we have the 3D view with the different uh, sanitary elements with the features of the bathrooms in this case and all the constructive elements of the beam model, the walls, floor slabs, doors, etc. Okay, so let's begin with the uh, project uh, paragraph of this tool. Okay, so we are going to establish the general settings. Here, where well, there are many settings, for example, to configure the standard uh, climate conditions. We are going to use it for the, for example, for ducting sizing. For duct sizing, we can, we should establish the altitude of the of the of this uh, uh, location. For example, let's imagine uh, 250 meters, and you can see how the their properties of, for example, air density that we are going to use in the size in ducting sizing, uh, we are going to be modified because we this is going to affect the density of the air, the velocity, and the pressure drops in the ducting. Also, all the winter and summer dry bulb temperatures and uh, dry and wet bulb temperatures is going to affect the sizing in uh, equipment for the conditions of the, the heating and the cooling capacity that is going to provide all the equipment, all the BRF, multi-speed, etc. Okay, so this is the, for the moment, these are uh, um, parameters that is going to, the user has, must provide the software. Okay, so let's, established by default, okay? So here are many tools, for example, which information we want to provide the drawings afterwards in the final results or in a screen for equipment, for ducts, for radiant floors, and for spaces, okay? This is what we can manage here. We can activate or deactivate whatever information we want. For drawing options, uh, the taste uh, heights and the scale divider for drawings afterwards. And for project uh, report design, which information we want to provide here, okay? And many, many other tools. For example, uh, important here is the, um, the spaces. For example, let's start with the library spaces. Before analyzing anything, we have to provide the condition for the spaces. For example, let's start dining room. This is going to be a air conditioned, uh, unoccupied uh, space with this uh, conditions, comfort conditions for cooling and heating temperature and humidity. Okay, there is not going to be an arena floor. For hall, the same thing. For offices, the same thing. We can uh, manage and edit uh, whatever temperature and humidity we want. The bathroom is not going to be air conditioned, so we are going to deactivate here. Also, the lift is not going to be obviously uh, cooled or heated. The risers. Uh, not either. The also the meeting room is going to be uh, hood, heated or cooled. The corridor also the same. The stairs, let's imagine it's going to be cold and heated, and not the technical room and either the uh, terrace. That's exactly. So once we have. Um, establish all the conditions for the spaces we are going to accept and uh, at least the condition of the space is going to be defined and also the thermal loads are going to be uh, taken from the thermal loads analysis we have just done it before okay so for example what else could we do here uh, here we could establish for example uh, the types of duct so we are going to provide a ducting network so we are going to establish the ducting uh, uh, the ducts and the grills, oh, okay? So the ducts, 
we are going to establish here, uh, for example, by default, the software is pro uh, proposes as the uh, still galvanized uh, material for the duct ducting. And here we have different possibilities to add uh, different materials by default. You can create your own. Every user can create their own uh, materials and their own ducts with the dimension, the thickness, etc. So let's uh, leave uh, by default uh, guns, and we are going to add another one that is going to be glass fiber. This is the most typical one. Okay, so we are going to provide glass fiber also to be available in this project. Okay, so let's add also, for example, grills, supply grills. Uh, here we can create manually all the grills we can imagine. And here, uh, for example, uh, taking the, the data from uh, any fabricant, any manufacturer, we can provide all the data for different supply grills, or we can import it here. We can import different supply grills, for example, uh, well, let's do it here before. In this list of all, everything this is um, uh, suitable to export to a library. You can create your own ducts, your own grills, your own diffusers, radiators, etc. And you can export and import to a library. Okay, you can create your own libraries of materials or equipment okay so here we are going to provide different for supply grills for example the first three of it okay for dimension i i think that is going to be enough for this job the, this uh, dimensions okay of grills also we are going to provide return grills by default this let's it's the same we are going to we can create manually or we can import it from a, this library by default of the software let's import the first three ones okay exhaust grill in case well, we are going i'm going to show you how to um, for example make a, a simple design of exhaust network for the bathrooms for the water clothes of this of this project okay so let's import for example the first three ones dimensions for exhaust grill also we are going to do the same for diffusers let's create a diffuser manually you can create your own diffusers Okay, with the different uh, dimensions, flows, etc. Or you can create an import from the from our library. For example, let's import the first one and the second one dimensions by default. You will always have this arrow, this blue arrow. Uh, it's uh, common values by default values or uh, data that are by default included in software. Okay, so. We have uh, generated the definition of the spaces. We have established all the tags, ty typologies, libraries of tags, grills, and diffusers. Also here, you can manage the criteria of calculation for DAGs. For example, you can uh, establish this criteria for maximum velocity for DAGs or um, according to regulations of your country or your region, okay? Or maximum pressure loss you want to consider in the DAGs. Also for spaces, you can establish the priority to calculate the, the distribution of the space loads. For example, we want to consider first of all radian floor, afterwards the data expansion analysis or thermal emitters. Okay. Simultaneously or different with independently with different criteria. Okay. So let's establish this criteria. And for example, here you can also consult in the different stories, you can consult the thermal loads that have in, been imported from the IFC uh, information for the thermal loads. Here you have the total cooling load, the sensible uh, cooling load, and the heating load. Okay, as you can see, and also of course the ventilation flow that is being imported from the thermal loads analysis. Okay, uh, okay. obviously apart from the uh, geometrical and analysis. Stuff. Okay, everything clear for the moment. Everything's be it's clear for. Just for the moment, any questions or is okay? Everyone can confirm by the chat, everything is clear. Okay, I see that everything is clear. Okay, perfect. So we continue. Well, so uh, we have just provided, as, as I said, the, the parameters, general parameters of the job, spaces, and the project. So let's start making a, a, 
HVAC uh, installation, HVAC, uh, for example, let's provide the from Toshiba, that is the manufacturer we have here. In the future, obviously, we will have more manufacturers, more fabricants. For uh, We hope to be, uh, I don't know, Fujitsu, Daikin, etc. We will uh, hope to be more fabricants and manufacturers here, included in the software. Okay, so let's provide, for example, for this office is building, a BRF installation, a BRF design, and we are going to provide another unit, a heat pump unit, for example, from this catalog, or, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's pick up a model from a series of this fabricant. Uh, and here we, you, you can see, you can consult the information from BTUs per hour. Uh, this is for what well, manufacturer uh, is included in, the, in their catalog. So let's start from, uh, I, I don't know, any model, uh, we are going to place it in the roof and this outer unit, this heat pump, and we are going to connect after uh, branch it uh, with the internal units. So let's provide here, for example, in the roof, this is an external uh, unit, and we are going to uh, create now the, uh, the network for uh, gas liquid piping for a uh, refrigerant. Okay, so let's provide horizontal pipes. For example, the height above the floor in the roof is going to be zero meters. Okay, and let's go communicate. For example, let's activate the auto mode and we are going to, for example, let's imagine that the rise is going to be more or less here. I don't know. It's not, maybe it's not real, but it's just an example. Okay, so the horizontal pipe here. Also, obviously, uh, before continuing, uh, just one thing, one uh, note. Here we can configure in the uh, top of the screen, the right, you can configure the units. With this icon, you can configure the units and you can modify whatever units you want. And this is going to be, you can modify the units independently, yeah, unit by unit, and the accuracy also, the decimal digits you want to consider for each unit, or you can modify the whole system for uh, from uh, between internal system, international system and IP system, okay? If you want to work with uh, imperial system on international, you can modify wherever, uh, whenever you want. Well, so we have provided this internal pipe, this horizontal pipe, and let's provide a vertical pipe. Here we can start from the initial floor, this is a roof, and we are going to uh, arrive to the ground floor, to the uh, sailing of the ground floor, okay? So let's provide here, and we are going to click on here. This is the vertical pipe, okay? So, uh, Always you see this icon, this lock icon, you can block it or unblock it. And uh, this means that the software is going to analyze automatically this parameter. So if you want to force whatever reason you, you could imagine the, the length here, you can block it and uh, leave, uh, uh, you are going to see, uh, to tell the software that it's not going to analyze this parameter and you are, you are going to block the, the parameter, well, the length, well, for whatever reason you would, you want, okay? If not, if you leave unblocked, then it's always going to analyze afterward uh, the, the length, okay? Obviously, here is not two centimeters, but maybe there's going to be more, okay? So the software is going to analyze the length or whatever parameters in whatever uh, window you could see, okay? For example, here in the, in the machine here, all these parameters are going to be analyzed automatically, okay? So let's pass, let's move on from uh, another floor. Here in the floor four, there's not going to be anyone, any one, sorry, anything. It is not going to be because we have technical room and the stairs is not going to be air conditioned here on the terrace. So in the floor three, we are going to see, well, let's the hide the, the templates because it's going to be a little bit annoying. And uh, so we are going to um, hide it, okay? so. We are going, we are in the floor three, we have the information for these offices, and we are going to provide a, a system, okay? So here, we are going to, for example, let's provide different internal units here from this menu. You can modify the, the aspect to, you can provide it, even you can activate in the, for example, in this case, in the, on the left, on the right, on the bottom, on the top of your toolbar, you can make an, uh, forcing, block it your toolbar here, you know, to be always available, okay? So this BRF menu, 
we have the outdoor units and here we have the different indoor units. For example, um, let's imagine uh, wall-mounted. Let's provide for these uh, spaces wall-mounted units uh, from this catalog. And uh, well, let's start for with the minimum, for example. And here you can see all the parameters that are going to be taken from the from the calculations of this job. Okay, so let's accept here, and we are going to, for example, modify the orientation. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, and we are going to provide one here, for example, near the wall, another one here, and in this case, for uh, well, let's modify for these offices, and uh, we are going to modify. Uh, let's imagine, for example, a sailing BRF. Okay with the minimum capacity, for example. And we are going to provide, for example, I don't know, here, more or less, okay? So, once we have uh, included here, you can see the reference for the vertical piping, the refrigerant pipe, okay? So let's connect, let's branch the different uh, units to the, um, to the standard units. For example, here, we can see the height about the floor, and we are going to accept and branch from the vertical pipe. We have the ortho mode activated, and we are going to more or less here. We are going to activate the object snaps. It's very important the object snap, but because it allows us to uh, make a capture or object references to and snaps for endpoint, perpendicular, orthogonal intersection, and tracking also for different units. Okay, so let's connect. In the center of the, this element, we have the connection to the piping, okay? And here you can, for example, from here, and we are going to, for example, here, and here, up to here. Okay, so this is the design for these units. Okay, so we have, uh, let's continue designing from another floor, in floor two, okay? For example, we will, see, we will have, uh, for example, let's provide, for example, cassette, a uh, two-way, for example, cassette with the minimum capacity. And we are going to provide these cassettes here, one here, one, another one here, another one here, and another one here. If you, uh, it's, but if something is bothering you, this tag, you can move it. For example, you can move this tag and uh, move and uh, Get it far away from the, the equipment, for example. Okay, if you we can do it for any other elements of the or any other spaces, we can deactivate the other mode and move uh, in any direction. Okay, so let's continue. And here we have the reference for the vertical piping of the refrigerant. Let's branch this piping to the different units, for example, here to this cassette. Let's branch here, another branch to this cassette. Okay, let's move this. So let's activate the auto mode and, okay. Well, let's activate again. And finally, we have this one, for example, over here. I'm drawing polylines as any other uh, CAD software of the market, for example, you can draw polylines and you can wherever you can introduce uh, insert points and modify, divide, you can edit, copy installations, wherever you want, okay? So this is the, the for example, the design for this cassette BRF units for this floor. Let's pass to the floor one. For example, in this case, we let's provide, for example, a ducting network. And this is very, very useful, very, uh, very, the, the most uh, common utility of the software. So let's let's continue. And here we have, for example, uh, let's provide the, let's place the, the machine, the equipment here, for example, in the bathroom. And we are going to provide the, all the network, that the network to the different elements, different spaces. So we can start from here. We have this uh, bar for that ducting. Okay, I'm I'm blocking here and the top of the uh, below the toolbar, the main toolbar. And here we have the straight ducts, uh, vertical or horizontal ducts, the possibility to, to manage the, to invert the airflow direction, grills, diffusers, or generate fittings, but uh, we are going to analyze size automatically by the software, 
or introduce pressure losses, for example, local pressure losses, if you want. So we're going to start uh, providing, for example, here we are going to choose the material glass fiber, rectangular, and obviously a flow supply network, okay? Everything else, uh, length, dimensions, and flow is going to be analyzed automatically by the software, okay? So let's accept here, obviously on the 2.50 meters, the fall, and we are going to click on here, for example, and let's, for example, just back to here, we're going to make a design. Maybe it's not very orthodox, but it's enough just to show the functioning of the software, okay? So here, for example, this network is up to here. Okay, so this is my design of supply network, for example, and I'm going to provide different grills in this network. In grills, we have supply type. Uh, let's start from the, for example, for the, the minimum size, we have imported from the predefined values. And we are, uh, we are going to click on the different positions. As you can see here, the software allows us to provide different positions on the left, on the uh, on the right, on the left, or in the top on the in the stream of the duct. Okay, so okay, another one here, another one here, for example, and for example, in the middle of this this network here, and in this or in the below the 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 duct, for example. Okay, so. Um, more or less is finished, this design. Let's place now the, the machine, the equipment, the internal units. For example, here we have the duct BRF unit, okay, here from this catalog. And uh, we could, for example, low silhouette, for example, and a minimum uh, uh, capacity. Let's, let's see and check how it works. Uh, here we can or reorientate the equipment before introducing, for example, with this tool. And we can, for example, uh, turn it back. Okay, the other, the other way around. Uh, well, let's place it here, more or less. Let's move this tag uh, in order not to bother here. For example, we can configure the text we want to show in the in every space if you want. Okay, remember from the beginning. So uh, let's move, uh, for example, this tool, and let's add another. Uh, a piece of that here, let's deactivate the alpha mode and we are going to draw it here. Okay, so this is the design of the network and uh, more or less is finished here. Well, obviously, we is left, uh, which is left is the, the resource network to the to come back to the to the unit to the duct unit here, but we are going to be in a minute. Okay, so for example, let's uh, well, uh, let's say from time to time, if you want to configure this, you can configure the automatic saving options automatically, for example, every five minutes, you can configure it. This is very useful also. But you can save here from time to time. Okay. So, uh, yes, we are going to pass finally to the ground floor and let's uh, provide the final um, design of the units. For example, let's for a uh, in this case, we are going to provide another ducting network. Let's move this tag. And we are going to provide uh, here, uh, for example, standards and another model. And here we are going to provide reorientate, it, for example, this one. And we are going to provide a ducting network of supply with glass fiber from this uh, point, this is the outlet of the supply network. And we are going to provide, for example, from here, and from here. Uh, and here in this case, we are going to provide different diffusers for this network. Okay? Here we have diffusers, supply diffusers. Uh, let's start for this uh, with this dimension. And we are to provide in the stream uh, side of each network, of each branch. Okay? This is the placement of the diffusers. Okay? So, uh, everything is going to be analyzed automatically by the software with this, uh, the flow is going to be provided with, according to the flow uh, provided by the, uh, by the DAG unit, okay? And as well with the checks, we will be 
uh, it will be available to all the console to the console the checks of the different diffusors also. So uh, let's add finally different tools. For example, uh, this uh, one cassette here, for example, and one uh, wall-mounted unit here with this capacity for this office. Okay, and we are going to connect or branch the refrigerant from this reference to the different units. For example, let's uh, move here, okay, and here we are going to connect with the internet units, uh, obviously the ducting network. Uh, well, for example, from here, and finally to the center of it. I don't know, I, I don't remember if in the, in the first one I forgot, yes, I forgot to connect to branch the internal unit to the vertical piping of refrigerant. So let's do it now. Okay, voila. Okay, so let's save the changes and now we are ready to analyze. Even we haven't finished with the network, the retro network is not mandatory yet. You can, you can make an analysis and you can, uh, step by step, you can analyze and see what errors you could find. Even you haven't finished the design, you can do the calculations uh, step by step if you want. So here we have the calculation tab. You can verify the results they have provided manually. For example, if you change or if you block something or if you force something, you can update results and see whatever uh, changes, man whatever manual changes you have made, if you, they verify the compliances of the regulations of the standards or not. Or even you could. Um, uh, wanted, uh, you could want to or uh, to analyze automatically or size the pipes, the ducts, and automatically by the software. So first of all, we are going to make a, an automatic design. Afterwards, if you want, you can modify whatever manual changes you want. So let's analyze automatically. So the software has analyzed, and let's see. For example, in a duct, you can see always on the screen the, the information of each piece of duct. You can see the reference, the height about the floor, the which type of ducts, rectangular or circular, which sizes or dimensions, material, length, flow supply, automatically analyzed by the software, the total loss of pressure, and the velocity and the maximum allowable ratio for these ducts, and the loss of accumulated pressure. Okay, all the information from duct to duct. If you click on the duct, you can console the checks but detailed, I can show you here in the, this window. Everything is justified with all the formula and the justifications of the different friction factor, linear pressure, Reynolds number, hydraulic diameter, etc. All the justification from the standards of as right they are designed, for example, or even the European cost regulations or whatever standards we are going to be including in the software. Okay. Or remember from the other day, all the reports, even uh, individual or whole reports of the job, you can export it in different formats, PDF, DOCX, HTML, etc. Or you can share it by internet in PDF format, print it in paper, print it in PDF, wherever you wish. Okay? So as you, will, as you can see here, everything is analyzed automatically by the software, the length of each piece, the dimensions, the flow, and all the console checks you can uh, establish here. Uh, what else could we do? For example, uh, very, very interesting is all the pieces of special fittings. For example, if I click here, I can consult the text and the software is going to be uh, to inform us which fitting is going to provide from which codes of ASRAE standards is going to be taken and all the justifications of the formula of this fitting. Okay, this is very interesting and very, very, very useful. Okay, the code and the analysis of the fittings. All the elbows, the reductions, all the T's could be, um, we could find wherever uh, uh, fittings you could imagine. Okay, so let's uh, see, let's consult another checks. For example, this is, we have also here warnings. We have errors on the bottom on the screen, on the right, we have, you, have, you could find errors, messages, or warning. For example, the warning here, if we click on the grill, we can consult the different flow checks. And here we can consult the different, because the flow is not included in the minimum and the maximum for this 
um, for this grill, this type of grill, okay? So uh, in this case, we should uh, increase the different, uh, well, the flow, the minimum flow for this sec, or we can reduce the number of uh, grills, or we can uh, uh, increase the flow of the machine, of the equipment. Uh, indeed, we have different uh, warnings uh, for this uh, capacity of the cooling uh, heating capacity because it's not verifying the, max, the minimum for this group of spaces, as you can see here. So we have to increase the capacity of the machine. As you can see here, we can, we, the console, if you console the checks for the equipment, it's not verifying the minimum cooling and heating requirements of the, this group of spaces. So let's pick up another, for example, this one is not verifying uh, either, this one uh, or either, uh, let's pick up, uh, well, for example, this one is verifying all the compliances for this group of spaces. Okay, let's accept and we can, for example, analyze or size the game. Okay, so for example, these warnings have disappeared for the minimum workflow for the grills, as you can see here, it's verifying the compliance. So let's see the other ones, for example, this grill, it's, uh, the, it's, over, it's exceeding the, mini, the maximum overflow. For example, let's pick up another, for example, this one. Okay, as you can see here, we can copy. And also uh, for this one, we are going to provide the, the same. Uh, or the minimum. Ah, sorry, because this is the minimum is not uh, required. Sorry, uh, the second one. No, the third one. The last one, yes, this is okay. So if we size again, do adjust the all the ducts, okay? As you can see here, all the fittings have adapted to the changes we have made, okay? So this is very very useful and very quick also. Also, if you have a huge uh, network or a huge um, amount of grills, you can copy the properties. If you assign one, you can copy the properties to every other group of grills from in the same floor, in the same story, okay? So let's see another uh, floors. For example, in the floor three, sorry, we have no errors. We can console the checks. Here, as you can see here, all the cooling capacity, you can console the checks activating this icon, and all the cooling capacity is sensible and heating capacity is verified here, okay? As you can see here, it's verified, okay? So uh, for this one, it's the same. And well, if this is the same, so you can consult the checks if you want. You can click on the equipment and you can consult the checks if you want. Okay. So in another floor, this we have the same. We can consult the same. Everything is verified for the, the different rooms. We provide the, the minimum cooling and sensible and heating capacity for these spaces. For floor one, well, we have an error here. And this error, it has to be related to the return uh, network. So let's provide a network of return network here. Let's uh, do, uh, for example, we can change from net return flow, glass fiber, the same one. And we are going to provide, for example, for this, uh, okay, network here. And for example, for this, all these elements here. Here, just back to here. The floor direction is important. If in case you have made a mistake, you can you have the possibility to invert the flow here. And we are going to provide a place the return grills. For example, here we are going to provide a return network uh, grill here, another one here, for example, uh, in this stream of this network, in this case, in the below the network, and in this case also below, okay? So uh, we could analyze here, well, uh, in the return flow network, we have to provide the, the flow. This is the only case we have to provide the flow for each grill. So let's consult, well, let's a size, and we are going to consult the different um, flow. For example, in this case, uh, 20, uh, for some, uh, sorry, 91 liters per second. So let's adapt here the grill and establish 91 like liters per second and let's modify the dimensions of this grill okay 
Well, in this case, I have, yes, that one. In this case, we have, uh, for this network, we have, for example, 80 liters per second. So let's establish 80 liters per second to this uh, return grill, and let's establish the maximum available in the libraries. Uh, for this one, we have, for example, a supply flow of 74, and we are going to provide this is 74. This is something we will do automatically in the future, obviously, but we have to provide it manually now. And finally, this network, we are going to provide a flow of a supply flow of 55 liters per second. So, uh, well, let's establish here 55 to return network and the second size available. So, if we size here again, the solver is going to adapt all the flows to the values we have provided. Well, here, in this case, well, we can we can we could have blocked it. Well, it's not uh, important. So, uh, well, something we could do now is to see this in three D in three D because we are now consulting all the elements on all the network in two D. But this is uh, one of uh, the utilities of the functions of the software is to see the three D design. So re let's refresh or redraw the 3D view of the building, and let's see bigger. With this icon view, uh, in this toolbar, you have the 3D view bigger of building. And as you can see here, we have all the elements. We can uh, hide the beam model and see all the references, uh, all the elements of the piping, refrigerant piping, gas liquid. We have all the external unit, the heat pump, all the internal units, cassette, um, Sailing units, wall mounted units, and the ducting network. Okay, for the different net return network, the supply network, and all the different in the different stories. You could activate again the bomb, the beam model, and you could see here. Okay, so this is very very useful, and you can see here. We could do the same for the ground floor. Well, here we could do the same. Uh, for example, here we got console. This is not verifying the compliances. We could modify. Uh, the minimum capacity for the internal unit. And here, for example, for the diffusers, we can consult the, the compliances of the checks. As you can see here, the minimum for the diffuser is not complying. For let's pick up another. Uh, well, in this case, the problem is that the, the internal unit is not complying uh, the checks of the minimum capacity for cooling and heating of the room. So let's pick up another unit. For example, uh, this one, well, this one is verifying all the compliances. So let's size again. And the diffusers, we could, we should change it manually for this side. And we can copy the properties, for example, to see, to show you. Well, let's save the changes and copy the properties. Here we can copy this diffuser to this one, this one, and this one. OK, so if we decide again, we will see the changes for this, the whole network. Let's refresh the 3D, and we can consult bigger. OK, so as you can see, the, 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 the use of, the, of the, the environment of the, this is a game brand, very, very simple, and it's very quick to use. Well, here is the, the errors related to the network, return network, we are not going to do it because it's, it's the same as the, the floor one. So what results we can obtain here? In reports, we got you, we could uh, go to this icon to the file reports or drawings. For example, reports we could do all the justification of the ABRF Toshiba, and here we have the reports. Okay, this window we have the project equipment list with all the equipment, indoor units, the joints, and the tube length for the piping. And the design temperature, uh, the system, the heat, the uh, oh, well, the conditions for the design temperatures, the other units, and all the compliances for these units. Okay, detail, everything detailed. Okay, you can always export and generate as uh, different formats I have uh, told you before. The ducting, the this is very very useful also. All the ducting with the all the pieces of the different networks. And we have all the information for this flow, 
uh, pressure losses, uh, material, sizing, velocity, etc. This is also very, very interesting. Also the material list, this is a, like a, the quantities of the different uh, materials and equipment uses. The ducts, instead of doing it manually, we can use the quantity in the square meter, for example, with the glass fiber, all the grills, diffusers, all the units, and all the refrigerant pipes. Instead of doing it manually, it's very interesting to obtain it uh, automatically by the software. Okay. And what else could we do with this material list? We could export to the uh, the to a format that we could communicate with our um, our tool. We have a tool to make the bill of quantities of our job. For example, if we export this in VC3 format, we could export this. This VC3 is a format with these standards, uh, at least in in some countries, for example, Spain or some countries. That we have this format to communicate with different, different uh, uh, estimating and cost estimating uh, software or tools like Archimedes. Archimedes, we have a tool we will see in a minute. We are going to support this in seminar or what? Well, let's see materials, HVAC. Okay, let's generate this file and we are going to open in the suite, in the CYP suite. Here we have, in management, we have Archimedes. This is a, a cost estimating a, a tool, and we are going, I'm going to show you. Uh, voila, this is the software, and we are going to create a new uh, bill of quantities from a VC3 file. So let's open this VC3 file I just generated, and we are going to create a new file. Voila, this is material uh, HVAC, and as you can see here, all the elements, all the equipments dif uh, divided in different chapters, different paragraphs, and with all the quantities generated by the software. And here, this is a huge software. This is a software or a tool that could, we, uh, uh, we could do another seminar for in the, only for this software because it's very powerful. And in this software, you can establish the, the for example, uh, and show you the configuration of the currency. I can establish the different currencies all over the world, dollars, euros, or Portuguese, or Indian, uh, rupees, etc. Nigerian, Brazilian, etc. The different, you can establish your own uh, currency, for example, euros, and you can establish the different for DAX. Every square meter of DAX, for example, it's much, I don't know, I'm going to embed it, 24 euros. And the software is going to provide you the execution material budget. All the final budget of all your uh, design, HVAC design. And you can compose here all the, the different equipment, all of the different uh, quantities, all of the different tools in CYP. Okay, this is very, very powerful, very useful. Okay, so in order for you to know it. Well, let's close here. Well, so. We have seen the reports, we have seen the exportation, the export to VC3. What else could we do? The drawing. The drawings. We can generate the different drawings for each floor. In we can export in DWG except for any CAD software, any CAD software in the market. We could generate the DWG except in order to customize your drawings. You can export to PDF or you can print it in paper directly if you want. You can modify the title blocks, the layers, in order to your DXR GWG format. And here we will should find the different uh, drawings we can activate. And for example, as you can see, this is the roof. Uh, this is the, for example, the floor three with the different all the information you could manage and uh, in order you, to show to the drawings in order to uh, to the installator, to the contractors, etc in order to pass information to the different uh, people that's going to intervene in the project. Very, very important, uh, very important, and this is going to be uh, customizable by the user, okay? So here we can print it, uh, all the drawings in one file and different files. Uh, I don't know, let's imagine, uh, for example, uh, HVAC drawings, okay? And display the file with the associated software. I he, here I have, I think I have a DWG viewer. Well, let's see while it's opening. 
So here we are going. Uh, sorry, mm, nah, because it's opening here. Let's wait just a minute because it's not helping me. Uh, okay. Continue up and down. Uh, yeah, voila. So this is the, for example, this WGU two uh, For example, as you can see, all the information in the WG format, or the Excel, or as you wish. Okay, with the legend, etc. So let's close here, and let's close this drawing file. So finally, just in order to close the loop. We are going to export the information in ISC format to the BIM server project. Let's export it. Okay. The sub is going to export all the information, reports, drawings, and the IFC format of the 3D of the installation of the HVAC facilities. And we are going to see it, of course, connected to the BIM project. For example, in IFC Builder, the origin we could uh, update the BIM model because this is the model we have provided uh, in the first place. So we can update the model with the information of the loads. Well, loads is not very worth it because it's only the thermal model and the HVC facilities. Here we are going to accept and we are going to see the 3D view. Okay, if we, well, this is not very, <laughs> yeah, so it's better to see here. Uh, we're going to activate or deactivate the floor, and here you could see all the networks here in this core. Well, the representation of uh, IFC Builder, all the pipings, units, and uh, networks, and all the other units, etc. So, in order you can console the different facilities in the original model, and you can see the clashes, the interferences, or inconvenience in your design. Also, in the BIM server platform, we could see the files. Well, if it's synchronized, I don't know, maybe I have problems. Maybe we have problems with synchronizing. Well, well I can't show you, but you, you, you have to believe me. Here is should be the information in HPAC also, because maybe we have some problems with the server today. So it's not synchronizing, but the information is there because you can see here this is a 3D view in your local, even in your local PC, for example. Uh, in C, you will have the local, you know, not only in the cloud server, in the BIM projects uh, tab, C BIM projects. In your user, okay, you should have the information of everything here. All the architectural model, all the IFC, HVAC loads, and the information for each app. For example, all the drawings, DAX, materials, and all the information, GLTF, and the VRF documents in PDF. This is all the information that should be in the, uh, in the 3D, uh, in the platform. Also, because, well, today we have problems with the synchronous. Well, uh, well, we have passed the time, more or less, uh, from 11 o'clock. Uh, I wanted to show you many things, but we don't have time. Uh, well, we, do you have any questions? Yes, we do, you do have any, it would be perfect if you have any questions or queries according to the seminar. Well, meanwhile, I'm going to open just to show you another design for, for example, for underfloor heating. I have just done before. For example, here I have, this is the Revit model we did it the other day, okay. So here, for example, we have gradient floor. This is automatically generated by the software. We can provide the different rooms, the different gradient floor design, the patterns. We could establish all the information, and the software is going to provide automatically. The, afterwards, we can modify or even introduce manually. We have the manifold here, the connection pipes between the manifold and the different gradient floors. Also, we could provide thermal emitters in each room, for example. And in the 3D view, you should see something like this with networks also, and uh, I'm going to deactivate the ground floor and the different radiant floors circuits. Okay. 
For example, here we have the daddy because we can avoid obstacles. For example, we can modify and establish avoid obstacles and we can modify the, the, the height of each network also. For example, in this case, in case there is a beam here that's passing through, for example, or something like that. So this is another design. And in the platform, okay, in the platform, for example, in this project, and I'm going to answer the question just in a minute, we should see, for example, uh, these uh, seminar loads file. Ah, sorry, because I haven't supported. Well, sorry, that you should see. So, well, uh, well, I see the, this question. Okay, uh, is it possible? Uh, someone, somebody is, pro is asking about: Is it possible to create families from scratch? Yes. Uh, well, according for the in the general sitting stack, we have. The uh, the families you can create is the equipment you should use. You can see here. I mean, for underfloor heating system, right and floor you can create from scratch your own right and floors here, or your thermal emitters, uh, right and panels. Also for ducts, for wheels and diffusors. This is what we have here. Libraries. All these elements you can create from scratch. Your own libraries and your own materials from any manufacturer of the market. Not for the equipment, for the in units, for the VRF or multi speed, etc. We have we are, we are going to provide and increase the elements from any manufacturer. This is the idea. No, uh, the elements from uh, the manufacturers is only uh, the element because the idea is that it's very difficult to create uh, external and general units from any manufacturer because you should we should have the curves, the performance is curves for any uh, manufacturer, so it's very difficult to create manually. The idea is not the idea for the moment. I don't know in the future, but the, the, the idea for the moment for CYP is to increase the database for um, to add more manufacturers and fabricants in the software. This is the idea. I don't know in the future, but for the moment, it's what we have, OK? Another question, uh, how can we create drawings, plans, elevations, and SL? This okay drawings well drawings here uh, I have shown you here in drawings tab here or in the file tab drawings we have created the drawings for all the stories you can create the for the different stories well I come back I am going to come back to the, the project we we have designed before and the drawings uh, here you can create it here in the tab uh, file drawings. This is what you can create in different formats, PDF, printing paper, DXF, or DWG. This is how to create drawings for the different stories of your building. Uh, elevations, well, the elevation for each element, you can modify element by element. You can modify the height above the floor. And here you have, by default, in each story, you have the height of the installation by default. You can modify here the elevations uh, of the different elements. If you mean something uh, drawing for all the um, elevation sort of traces, not for the moment. And for S SLD, I don't know the the abbreviation. Sorry about it. Sorry about that. No, I don't know what do you mean. Maybe I think it's S STL. Well, ah, okay. Uh, we have another, yes, okay, single di diagrams, maybe you mean this one, because we have in the store of the beam server dot center, you have schematic diagrams. Maybe it's what we, you need. This, you have cypotherm schematics. This is a free tool you have available in, in beam server dot center platform, and you can create your own schematic diagrams for HVAC installations. So you can use it. You can download it and you can use it to create your own diagrams. Okay, a schematic diagrams. Maybe in the we are trying to connect this to connect to communicate this software with the HVAC in order to to communicate both of them. For the moment, you can do it with free tool and you can do your own schematics. Maybe this is what you want: a schematic diagrams for Cypher. Okay. But are uh, outside at Saturn at back as another module. Uh, okay. Uh, well, much more questions.
frequently cost is changing from material, so do we need to update accordingly? Well, the cost, uh, well, the, here we are only uh, analyzing in HVAC, we are only analyzing the cost, the quantities here. Here, the quantities of the material list, you have the quantities, whatever material you are going to provide, steel, duct, piping, sus grills, etc. Afterwards, if you export to visit in VC3 format, you could uh, even go to Archimedes, and in Archimedes, you can establish the costs and uh, make your execution material budget. Okay, so you need to update it there. I don't know if I answered the question, I tried to. <laughs> Uh, well, another question, VRF system, no, we have here in the, if you see here in the tab, in the Toshiba tab, we have VRF, we have aerothermal, we have multi-split and we have a split one by one. For the moment, we have direct expansion systems. In the future, we are going to include uh, hydronic systems also. We are going to, we are the, the, working to develop hydronic systems also. Yes, for chill water system, for chillers, and for heat pumps, for water system, yes, we are going to, we are working on that, on it, yes. In order to level it. Yes, another question, how to create sections? Sections you mean in 3D? Sections of the whole building? Well, the sections here, we, we are going, we can work in, in this, in this over, not for the moment. Here in the, for example, in the platform, uh, well, I'm going to, yes. For example, I'm going to open a project I have already synchronized. Uh, for example, this one, okay. In the, in the Big Center Center platform, you could make uh, sections here. For example, this building is more completed with another tools, but if I, the architectural model, transparent, well, thermal models, okay. Well, this is, you, you can see the, all the whole building and you can make sections here. For example, uh, for, as you can see here, there are sections for the building and you can print it directly or whatever you want. Maybe in the future we will have a tool to create sections in the different tools, in the different elements. For example, in HVAC, this could be useful. Okay. For the moment, you can see on the screen with this BIP server.center platform, even in your mobile, even in your tablet, or in your uh, Android or iOS uh, device, or even in your laptop. Okay. With this section, uh, with this tool in the BIP server.center platform. Okay. For the moment, not in HVAC tool, but in the build servers and the platform. The tags are automatically uh, take. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, some question here about the tags are automatically sized, but I don't know what what is what is what is. I don't know what you mean with. Okay, uh, maybe you can, even, even I cannot, uh, even I can, if I don't, if I'm not able to uh, answer any question, you can, you could send me an email, but uh, I'm going to show you and tell you here. Any questions that maybe, or doubts you could even have uh, from now on, uh, you could email uh, the question to support at site.com, okay? Because I don't understand the quotes or mythic. Mm. Yes, uh, well, uh, the duct sizes are all even, uh, yes, always take into account this, the thickness of the different materials, yes. Because here, I, if you mean the thickness here in the general settings, uh, sorry. Uh, ducts, for example, glass fiber, uh, here you have the thickness, okay, obviously, in order to consider the different sizing in the ducts and the pressure losses, etc., 
we have different the correction uh, the, the roughness coefficient for the, all the losses the pressure losses and all the thickness for every dimension uh, we have imported here or you can modify if you want so this is taking this is taking into consideration okay the thickness yes of the the insulation in case of glass fiber okay A uh, chiller, well, as I said before, the chiller and hydronic system are not included in the software, not yet. We will have it in, uh, in a short period of time. Uh, so don't worry about it because we will have it in the future, near future. The hydronic systems, we are working on it to develop it. So the hydronic and chiller sizes are not even, are not yet included in the software. Well, I don't know, maybe more or less it's everything is clear, everything is more or less answered. Uh, anyway, if you have any doubts or queries, uh, do not hesitate to write uh, by, the, by, by the email at the address I gave you. Uh, one final question. Okay, well, the software is not met only for VRF, as I said before. We have different, for example, for the moment is direct expansion. We have VRF, aerothermal, multi split, and split by one by one. Yes, for the moment we have that, uh, that design and that equipment. But in the future, we will have also a hydronic system and other type of elements. We have also radiant floor, underfloor heating, we have thermal emitters. So not only VRF, we have different systems. Okay. The insulation together with the ducting, uh, not, not, not possible yet. For example, you mean, for example, for glasses, uh, for the steel, galvanized steel plate, if you want to add insulation uh, uh, over around the, the, the ducts. If you mean that, uh, it's not yet included yet. Well, you see, you see the 3D modeling here. Okay, uh, the insulation. You, you, yes, it's another. It's an improvement or an enhancement. We have to develop the insulation to not for the glass fiber, obviously, but for the uh, galvanized steel or any other materials that are provided with uh, insulating or insulation. Yes, it could be could be useful and it should be included in the software. In the future, we will. We we, we hope to have it. This software, uh, another question, this software is, is for both. Uh, I mean, it's for calculations, for analyzing, this is more important thing. Analyzing, reports, drawings, and also 3D modeling. Yes, 3D. Uh, if you mean that we, do, we, we don't work, well, while we work in the software, we work in 2D, but the software is going to generate a 3D modeling, as you can see here. Maybe no, for the moment it's not possible to work directly in 3D. We have any other tools, for example, Lightning or other tools that works directly in 3D. But this software, I hope, I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm guessing. But in the future, maybe we have the possibility to work directly in 3D. But for the for the modeling and for the calculation, for the, it's the same to work in 2D than in 3D. Maybe you are more used to work in 3D, but in the software, uh, the software is going to generate the 3D modeling. This is the target, another target of the software, okay? As you can see here. And uh, we provide all the quantities, real quantities that are in 3D in the building according to the elevation and the heights of the installations. So the software is thought to every purpose, not only calculations, but also modeling. Okay. So that's it. Well, I think that's uh, for today is enough. Uh, well, see you next week. We have another seminar from this cycle seminar. I don't know, it's fire protection, I guess. So thank you very much for your say for your assistance and for your attendance. And I hope to see you next week for the next seminar. Uh, thank you for your thank you very much for your patience. I hope to be I hope you have found interesting this seminar from today. And we are in touch. Whatever you need from us, you you can contact with the sales in the department with Vincent or John Paul. 
and you could uh, ask wherever you need. Okay. So thank you very much for everyone. Uh, have a nice day. Okay. Bye bye.